contact there that he can call and you can get a meeting set up? Yeah, we do because, like I said, each year they send us a letter saying what projects, what roads are you able to work on, mm -hmm. so we can plan them. Yeah. But most of the time it's like gas leak or I think on uh, yeah. on the roads we did last year, they came out and replaced the services when we were doing the road. Was that that's not baby? No, it was off of Baines. Just one of the roads off of Baines. Oh yeah, that's right. They did on Barnaby. Amen, was it Amen or Barnaby? Uh, Barnaby. Barnaby. Matter of fact, they're still. Even after you paved that, they both went off that road, so it's all good. So, I mean, things do happen, but... Jack had a meeting with the PSC&P, Mike Boyle. On the 16th, I just set it up today. That's the electric. That's where we could reach. Mike Boyle, I don't know if he covers both electric and well, gas, can, but... Uh, it's just about the general... Bob Suter, or Dave Suter. Bob Suter just retired yesterday. <laughs> okay. He was just named to be charged with being a county problem with the we can check into that and John might advise you whether he can uh, issue road opening permits where they well, make them pay for reservations. Well, Fred's ready to sign down billing and we just thought we'd try to take the amicable route first. Right. With a contact you may have, I have a contact, we can get a hold of these people and say, look, here's what's going on, can you help us? Right. If not, then we have to take you know, a more aggressive approach, right? So, Just moving out. Well, I'll coordinate with Jack, uh, and I'll reach out and set a, meet, a meeting up with Jack or with PSC and he can okay. okay. Make sure Nick knows too. He's got contact there. Yeah, they yeah. must be there. And I'll reach out. My cool. contact is with Mr. Forlorn, so and he's up in uh, North Jersey, so I'll make a contact there too. Right. I got a question on uh, these are homes, and I, I just asked John Corney whether or not we should start. You know, reaching out to Governor Sis Bond. I mean, they have not reacted to anything in over a year. Right. The last conversation we had was with their uh, corporate attorneys, and that was in July. And basically, they owe us the surveys, the as built, all the legal. The legal work is what's left over right now. The normal punch list stuff that most right. owners take forever to get you anyway. Right. Everything was turned over to their corporate legal department. I think they're out of land. Right. So well, typically they're going you know, they can take their time and it could last for years. Yeah. Really. They they were addressed. I think uh, uh, it's been a couple of years now. That job's been complete for I think two years, but the cracking in the basement and things of that nature were taken care of. Last summer that one was complaining there was a really good golf stone underneath or something like that. They re topsoil, reseed it. You know, now come this spring, we'll see it again, and it could really held up. But the, the greater things are, like you said, the as built, the easements, the, that's the stuff that's going to take forever for them to get. Right. So ultimately, we're going to have to hold their hands in the fire. And I would think, why wait? Let's go to the bond company now and get them working. Well, we sent them letters saying, this is what you need to get rid of your bond. And yeah, and that can go on for years. Send me, I guess, your last letter. Okay. And you've got the bond. The copy all the time? Yeah. Yeah. Send me a copy of the, the bond to the compass. Send you send that in. Send that to me. Because yeah. once, you know, if you just send it down with a warning that you want to go to the bond company, you don't get the reaction. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Yeah. 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 Uh, there's really nothing going on right now other than the first event is still that you missed out some more. Uh, it's a Thursday night, um, it's like the second week. Roseanne uh, is handling it, so. Could be the 11th or the month. Yeah. 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 Um, 
Finance is uh, scheduled to meet on February 14th. Well, I don't know. I don't know about the rest of the finance committee members, but I won't be there on February 14th. Otherwise, I'll be locked out of my house when I come home. So pretty dedicated. Huh? I'm the opposite. She wants me out. <laughs> my wife teaches that. Well, why don't we just move it? What's that? On Tuesday? What is it? That's Monday, right? Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. suggesting we move it to the 15th Tuesday of uh, 5 o'clock. Are you going to have it the 15th or you're going to have it the Friday before? No, the 15th weekend. A Tuesday late. Yeah, same Tuesday. Thursday night. And at that meeting, we will be reviewing the last three departmental budgets that we haven't reviewed yet. And then we'll be discussing. Um, where we go from there with, um, with regard to uh, tallying some numbers, seeing where we are, getting a copy of the annual financial statement, um, and talking to Bob Maroney, and then seeing where we need to come back and where we need to cut. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That should be one. I don't think I'll be able to see. Buzz, you got anything? Uh, the only thing I have married, I'm still getting caught up from vacation, is uh, I was talking to the fire marshal's office today. They're telling me that they're doing away with the whole uh, office. Uh, supposedly the prosecutor's office is going to be taking that over. I'm still waiting to find out more details. I just found this out today. You're going about arson investigation? Yeah. Inspections or what? Uh, everything. Everything in the court. Yeah. How about the uh, prosecutor? The prosecutor is going to do arson investigation. It's a Delusat fine. What if we you want to set a meeting up and try to yeah. get this out? Yeah, when you want to, when you want to get it together. I don't know. What's a good time? We have to contact that. Is it Lincoln? Oh, uh, first, first we, we, just we get gotta, together first to talk about it. So we get to do it. Yeah, we need to sit down and talk about. Okay. When you want to do that? I don't care, Jack. You want to each point us too? So I don't. Whatever. Right, yeah, as long as they get the four or five points. Okay.
the art is doing thickets. Uh, areas of concern right now are Linden Street. Um, Which street? Linden. <coughs> and you know, I haven't gotten any complaints on Warren Street. situation with the tractor trailers, which are becoming problematic. Um, you know, they're getting 100 to 200 trucks in a day or more, and they're literally just clogging up King Street, Jersey Avenue. Now, part of the problem was because the amount of snow we had that it limited the availability of spaces on their, on their premises because I went down there and checked it out, and that is true. Uh, they were doing everything they can to, to make more spaces. But, you know, it does slow up the traffic going in, in, in the terminal. I talked to Bill Johnson. They have Del Monte, which are parked in. All Del Monte's trucks are told to park on that empty lot. They fill it up right on that North Broadway. You'll fly gens lot back in there. But at times, you know, they're getting two, three trucks. And it's a problem. And I don't know if they hold them all on their lot. Um, I don't know what the solution is. But, you know... It, it leads to uh, complaints from residents for idling of the vehicles from the trucks. Uh, we looked into that before uh, when they complained a couple of years back. We checked with the DEP, and you know there, there's like a, a loophole with these trucks because they're refrigerated reefers. So they're not maintaining their uh, reefers because they have to maintain a constant temperature for produce. It has to be a certain temperature. Stuff can't freeze and they can't get too hot. So consequently, the trucks have to run, which upsets the neighbors. You know, there is an idling law, however, there's a loophole and those types of vehicles are allowed to run. If they have a sleeper cab and somebody's on hold slot and they get there early, as long as they're sleeping in the truck, they're allowed to run again because they have to have heat and cold for the drivers. It's an issue. I don't know what the answer is. Maybe we can meet with Pulse representatives to help a little bit. Uh, I, I, you know, you know, it's something that's, I'm sure, is going to get back if you already haven't gotten a call on already. But yeah. I did. You know. So I, I received several calls, and uh, it's a problem. I mean, we've we've met with Mr. Holt regarding this problem over the years. Uh, I'm a tough, you know, when I was on the police department, and it just seems as though whenever we talk with Mr. Holt, that things are okay for a short period of time, and then they just go back to the way they were. If in fact. Del Monte thing is causing this situation. You know, there'll be permanent parking down there, and we'll tow the cars, and we'll, you know, stop parking there. Right. And if Mr. Holt can't control those people, then we'll control them. Yeah, I was at all that for you know, uh, yeah. to assist Mr. Del Monte. It's ridiculous. And, I mean, you know, they don't think that any of the rules apply to that. You know. We are, you know, like you said, we are, we are writing tickets. Uh, it's something, you know, I mean, listen, permit parkings aren't, you know, necessarily the solution. It's not a perfect situation, as we've uh, discussed with you before. But, you know, 